Hey, good evening. It's uh, Friday, March 12th. It's good, good to have you here tonight. We're going to continue talking about how we can nourish our children in such a way that brings honor to God and causes this to be something they delight in. Again, going back to what I started this series of videos with, why are children rejecting the gospel? They're rejecting the gospel because from a human perspective, we don't make the gospel very attractive to them. We make the gospel about rules and regulations and doing things that make us happy, at least from the child's mind. And that wears on a child when they get into middle, middle school, older when they get to be teenagers, when they feel like this is all about something that is about pleasing parents no matter what our intentions and our motives are, that pushes them away from the truth. Ephesians 6, 4 encourages us to be a nourishment, an encouragement to our children. Bring them up, nourishing them with the truth of God. So we looked at Psalm 103, where we, this attitude that God doesn't delight in giving us a hard time. He rejoices by keeping our sins far from us. He doesn't keep a record of wrongs. 1 Corinthians 13 is a great illustration of that truth. So I'm looking at verses 4 to 7, but I'm starting at verse 7 and working back up. This morning we looked at verse 7, the idea that love always protects, always trusts. The way you love your children is the way they're protected by you. Not that they're under attack, but they really know your protection, your care. They know that you're a refuge for them and a safe place. Your children need to know that they're safe with you. It's maybe the most important human gift you can give. And then the next, working back up, verse 6, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. As some of you know, I've been working with families for a long time, and children often get this idea that as parents, we actually delight in tracking them down and finding out what's wrong and pointing out the bad and making sure that we're on them. They don't feel like they can do anything without mom and dad being on them. That mom and dad seem to actually enjoy bringing things out negatively. But this passage says, we don't delight in those things. We don't nourish that way. We nourish by rejoicing in the truth. So how do I rejoice in the truth? Well, there's three elements. Again, there's more things, but we can say at least these three things. We can rejoice in the opportunity that we have to realize these children are a blessing the people God has placed in our life, that's a blessing to us. That's a joy to us. So that's the first thing. I'm rejoicing in the truth because I know that my children are a blessing to me. The second thing is that I rejoice in the opportunity that I have the opportunity to give my kids the Word of God, truth. Not just my ways and whims, but God's truth. I have that opportunity to give it to them. So I'm rejoicing in the fact that my children are a blessing. I'm rejoicing in the fact that I, give, I have the opportunity to give God's truth and not my garbage, but God's truth. And then lastly, I have the opportunity to participate with God in the calling of my children to Christ. Those three things need to dominate our parenting. Instead of us being hurt, instead of us being upset, I need to be dominated by those three things. That my kids are a blessing, that I get to speak the truth of God to them, and that God uses this way in his covenant mercies to draw them to himself. You see, this works for parents or husbands and wives, someone that you love. Love can delight in those things. Love can rejoice in those things. That's the truth.
our minds are so far away from that when we discipline, when we correct, when we direct. It's all about telling your children, do this and don't do that, or be disappointed in our teenagers. Be disappointed that we get hurt. Yes, love is a mess. Loving people is risky business. We are vulnerable, we get hurt. But these three things I can always rejoice in this truth. The blessing that my children are, the unbelievable privilege I have to speak the truth of the word of God to, to our kids, not my family traditions, but God's truth. And then lastly, this is the promise in God's covenant mercy that draws children to themselves, I mean to himself. Wow, that's a blessing. See, I can, don't have to worry about pointing everything out. I don't have to delight in their wrongdoing or, or appear that way. I can rejoice in the glorious, marvelous truth of God which is a blessing. That's how I nourish. That's how I make the gospel more attractive to my kids. Think about that this night. Again, loving your feedback, keep giving it, and uh, Lord willing, we'll see you in the morning. If it's Saturday and it's nice outside, I'll see you outside. Again, Lord bless you, Lord keep you all, and may we continue to serve God together. Have a great night. Bye-bye.